Stories of Great Christians. From its radio studios in Chicago, the Moody Bible Institute greets its friends everywhere with Chapter One in the transcribed story of Florence Nightingale, the Lady with the Lamp. Romantic but respectable days of Queen Victoria in England, high-born ladies were usually delicate and subject to fainting spells. Yet, in addition to Queen Victoria herself, this period in England's history produced several remarkable women. Among them, the famed Florence Nightingale, Lady with the Lamp. Florence Nightingale, like most other ladies in the Victorian era, was considered delicate. Yet this brilliant woman lived to be 91 years old. And during her lifetime, in obedience to God's call, she endured untold hardships in laying the foundation, a glorious profession, that of modern nursing. The most spectacular of Florence's achievements, however, was not the organization and training that went on behind the scenes. It was the self-sacrificing and courageous work she carried on in the hospitals during the now historic Battle of the Crimea. Many years after that tragic and terrible struggle, a group of officers met to talk over old times. <laughs> so I'm sure that as long as the Crimea battles remember, no one will ever forget Lord Raglan. <laughs> Nor General Stalk, I venture to say. <laughs> how about Sidney Herbert? Well, now I'm on Major Sillery. <laughs> 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 Uh, everyone has his favorite thumb in here, it seems. <laughs> Bells, the lark, every man jack of us, write on a slip of paper the name of the one person he thinks will be remembered longest. Yes. 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 And when the papers were taken up, it wasn't Raglan, nor Stork, nor Herbert they remembered best. Only one name found on all of them. The name of Florence Nightingale. So Florence Nightingale became a legend in her lifetime. And from the extravagant things people said, you might have gotten the idea that she was sort of a sinless being, specially endowed to perform miracles. But Florence herself would have been the first to assure you that she never ceased to be entirely human. In her childhood, you may be sure she was naughty quite as often as other little girls, and even with her nurse, whom she dearly loved. Florence, shame on you. Why did you throw down your book? Oh, Miss Christie, I'm tired of it. Well, all right, then. Finish your embroidery. I don't want to. I'm going out into the garden. Not so fast, Miss Flo. Come back here. Do you hear me? Oh, all right. What do you want? Pick up your book, Florence. I don't want to. Pick it up. Come over here. Why? Do I have to? Yes. Now sit here, beside me. Here? Yes. Why do you want me to sit here? Can't I go to the garden? How long do I have to stay? Miss Christie, how long do I have to sit here? Till you have the spirit of obedience, little miss. The spirit of obedience. Florence loved animals and enjoyed galloping about the downs on her pony, and particularly with Mr. Gifford, the rector. say such funny things, Mr. Gifford. Oh, maybe it's just that out in God's sweet sunshine, anything seems worth laughing at, eh? Oh, it's <laughs> wonderful. Oh, I say, uh, who's that down there in the hollow? Why, it's old Smithers, isn't it? The shepherd. Are you sure? Uh, I wouldn't expect him to have such a time with his sheep. He usually keeps them rounded up very well, doesn't he? These are scattered everywhere. Why, it's because of Cap. Cap's not there to help him. Cap? Who's he? Smithers' dog. 
He's a very good shepherd dog. He keeps the sheep all together with no trouble at all. Oh, something must have happened to him. Well, let's ride over and ask Smithers about it. Yes, let's. Whoa, boy. Oh, Mr. Smithers, where's Cap? Oh, I say, uh, has something happened to your dog? Hello, Reverend. Miss Florence. Yes, something very bad has happened to Cap. I regret to say he's seen his last days, probably. Why, what do you mean? Where is he? I've got him up in the sheep shed behind my cottage. Legs broke, I guess. Just lies there and whimpers. Oh, that's too bad. How did it happen? Oh, some of the rowdy boys got a bit rough. Hit him with a stone. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Gifford, can't we do something to, to save him? Well, at least we could take a look at him. Uh, may we ride that way and look him over, Smithers? We well, certainly. Like I said, he's behind the house in the sheep shed. Oh, good. Come on, let's see what we can do. There he is, Mr. Gifford. Lying over there in the corner. Oh, sorry, old fellow. Is it bad? His skin's broken here. Oh, and he's been bleeding, hasn't he? Yes. However... I is it too bad to heal? The bone's not broken. If he had the right care, I think he might pull through. Care? What kind? I mean, is there something I can do? But if we could bring the swelling down, I think it would stop the danger of infection. Then he'd be all right in a day or two. You tell me what to do, Rector, and I'll be his nurse. <laughs> all right. Well, now, first we need hot water and some rags, and we'll clean up this leg and put hot compresses on it. Hot compresses? What are they? Oh, just clean rags soaked in hot water. Clean rags? Now, what could we use for... Oh, I know. We'll tear this uh, Hold on now. That's Smithers' clean smock, isn't it? Yes, Mama will give him another one. <laughs> well, while you're doing that, I'll get a kettle of hot water from Smithers' wife. Good. And I promise you, Mr. Gifford, if nursing is all he needs, this dog is going to get well. Now, your porridge, Uncle. Yeah, make it a big bowl, my boy. I shall need plenty of nourishment to get through another day like yesterday. But by tomorrow you should have Cap to help you again. I doubt it. I doubt it. Miss Flo and the pastor were here all yesterday afternoon, nursing the poor dog like he was a prince. Pass the milk, please. I know a sick dog when I see one, Tom. I'll be having to take the rope to him. You should have seen the little girl giving her orders. I had to keep eating the water to make it just right. And she kept those little hands in it all afternoon, wringing out the art packs. And when she left, she said, I think you'll be all right now. I'll be back first thing in the morning to see him. <laughs> Imagine a rich kid like her troubling yourself about a poor man's dog. Uh, she's got a kind heart, she has. I could hope that Cap would get well just to please her. Just for curiosity... Let's go along out and see how the poor dog is. Very well. Take the key. Well, Uncle, there's your broken legged dog walking around like he was never hurt. And what? Miss Flower. Mr. Smith. I could hardly sleep last night thinking about Cap. How is he? Oh, Cap, you're walking. You're getting well. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I say, look at him wag his tail, trying to show how grateful he is. Yes, as it turned out, my first adventure in nursing was a complete success. And now about the rest of my family. Well, besides Papa and Mama and me, there is my sister, Parthi. 
sister Parthi and I were reasonably presentable, but neither of us inherited Mama's beauty. Of course, looks wouldn't have mattered so much if we'd been boys. But that though Mama and Papa longed for a son and an heir to their estate, our family was destined to remain as it was. I guess that was why Papa treated Parthi and me as though we were boys. For instance, nowadays girls learn embroidery and piano, but Papa taught us Greek and Latin, and history too, and economics, and all sorts of impossible subjects for girls. He'd been at it since we were very small. But when we became young ladies, we spent more time with Mama doing things like visiting the sick. Mama, what's the matter with Hannah Peters? I can't say exactly, Flo. I couldn't tell too much from the way Helen talked when she was in this morning. I guess it's some kind of fever. Is Helen the oldest of the Peters children? Yes. She's 12 now, and a help to her mother, too. I'd say her mother needs all the help she can get with that brood. Six children, and the youngest still in the cradle. Well, we'll see. Soon see how they're making out. Come right in, ma'am. Thank you. A wife in the bedroom? Uh, yes, ma'am. And she hasn't said a word for hours. Right in here, if you please, ma'am. She's been terribly feverish since this morning. You can see for yourself. This is serious. Have you called the doctor? Well, we were sort of thinking it wasn't much. You see, a couple of days ago, it was only a sliver in her hand. This hand? Yes. Now, I've had many a sliver in my hand, and I never... But this is infected. Yes, it is. Tell Jim to go for the doctor at once. How long has her hand been swollen like this? Oh, since the day before yesterday. Uh, oh, Mrs. Nightingale, she's so still. Uh, do you Mama, think... Mama, her pulse is so fast I can't count it. And she's burning up with fever. Oh, we should have come sooner. Yes, the day before yesterday. Oh, what? What is it, Miss Flo? Uh, why do you look so... Her pulse is fluttering. I can't... I... You mean... She... She has no pulse. She's dead. <laughs> but, Parthy, what's the use of shaking your head and saying it's too bad Peters didn't know better? Why didn't he know better? Florence, there are ever so many poor people in the country who've never been to school in their lives. You, you can't expect them But to... why haven't they gone to school? Oh, Flo, don't be tiresome. It is tiresome to think of the poor, isn't it? We have coaches and fancy clothes and... I don't know what. But if some people have nothing, it's no concern of ours. Oh, but Florence, that, that's the way things are. Now, now, Florence, how many times have I told you not to grumble about things you can't change? But, Papa, everyone should be able to read and write, everyone. And they shouldn't have to die because they don't have sense enough to prevent... to prevent infection, for example, should they? I think poor Hannah's death has been too much for you, Florence. Yes, dear Flo, you're upset. Why don't you go up to your room and... Lie down for a little while. That's right. Send me off to my room. Lie down. But that isn't going to make me forget. And someday I'm going to do something that will really help the poor. Wait and see if I don't. Wait and see. And so we conclude Chapter 1 in the transcribed story of Florence Nightingale, The Lady with the Lamp. This is another in the series of stories of great Christians which come to you from the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. <laughs>